Hello there, it's Charlie from Silence to Talkies, with the next episode during which I will investigate why a silent movie star's talkie stardom did not stick. This episode will focus on Niels Astor, one of the biggest stars at MGM in the late 1920s, who transitioned successfully into talkies, but by the late 30s had moved into supporting roles in B-movies before returning to his native Sweden in the 1950s, where he made only a few more films before his retirement. I first learned of Niels and Clarence Bull's The Faces of Hollywood, a wonderful book that my grandfather owned that featured Clarence Bull, who was the MGM photographer's shot of stars during his tenure there, including many of Niels, his shots of the stars, I should say. Years ago, when I was researching for my initial master's thesis on Marion Davies at the UCLA, UCLA Film Archive, I saw Niels in her film The Cardboard Lover and more recently saw him co-star with Garbo in Wild Orchids. The phrase, if looks could kill, doesn't even begin to describe the power and intensity of Niels' facial expressions in Wild Orchids. His gaze was like Valentino's or Jack Gilbert's, but different at the same time. It was simultaneously menacing, intriguing, dangerous, and alluring. But as intense as his dramatic portrayals were, Niels proved equally adept at comedy, like in The Cardboard Lover. How could someone so talented not be a huge star in the talkies? The usual explanation is just like Olga Baklanova's, his foreign accent, this time being from Sweden. But just like with Olga, the reasons behind his loss of talkie stardom were more complicated and different and numerous. Join me as I go back to the beginning of Niels' life and trace his career from silent to talkies. Niels Astor was born in 1897 to Swedish parents Anton and Hildegard, who were currently at that time living in Copenhagen. Not much is known about Niels' childhood. I have not yet had the privilege of reading his autobiography, but know that a fan has very kindly translated it from Swedish to English online, so I will be reading that very soon. When Niels was a young man, he moved to Stockholm to study acting with Augusta Lindbergh, who got him gigs on the stage, best known on the stage, where he was discovered by director Marit Stiller, who was best known for later on directing and discovering Greta Garbo and her first picture, released in 1924. Stiller recruited Niels to be a part of his 1916 silent film, The Wings, a queer-themed drama inspired by the myth of Icarus and Daedalus that concerned the relationship between a gay sculptor and his model. Only a fragment of this film survives and is available to view on YouTube, where wonderful film restorers have pieced together the rest of the film using production stills. It appears that Niels played himself as an aspiring actor auditioning for the movie in a meta type of introductionary part of the film. The film was extremely groundbreaking for the time. While I cannot find any box office data about it, I can assume that it was a very personal project for both Stiller and Niels, both of whom were a part of the LGBTQ plus community. Niels traveled to Copenhagen soon after and through Danish actor H. Hertel was able to secure more film roles. Niels ended up making 20 more movies between 1916 and 1926 in Sweden, Denmark, and Germany. One such film was 19, the 1922 Victor Sjöström Swedish film Mortal Clay, in which Niels appeared in a featured supporting role as The Apprentice. Sjöström, being one of the most famous directors in Swedish film history, had recently before this released the classic The Phantom Carriage. The Apprentice is the assistant of a sculptor, Master Anton, played by Ivan Hedqvist, excuse my pronunciation of Swedish names. Master Anton is making a statue of his wife, Ursula, played by Jenny Hasselquist, who is forced into this arranged loveless marriage. The statue of Ursula is supposed to signify her purity, but as she has an affair outside of their marriage, both Ursula and the statue show signs of sin. But Ursula's statue isn't the only one in the film that becomes animated and comes to life. Look at this clip as Niels and another apprentice later mourn the death of Anton. What they are seeing that we are not seeing at first is the statue of Jesus on the cross coming to life and bleeding over the coffin of the murdered Anton. Niels' acting is very interesting here. It begins subtly as he sees the bleeding Christ out of the corner of his eye, but then grows in intensity as he realizes what is happening right before him. Variety gave the film raves, and it is seen as one of Sjöström's classics today. In 1926... Niels made The Three Cuckoo Clocks in Germany that was released in other countries as Adventure Mad. 
The film appears to be one of Niels' first leading man roles as he appears as Reginald Ellis, a nobleman that is bored and ends up seeking buried treasure in Egypt and finding trouble along the way. Check out this brief clip. We briefly see Niels as Reginald strapping on boxing gloves to assumingly fight and enter some type of adventure. The film appears to have received positive reviews, including in the Film Daily, which said Niels Astor gives a finished performance in a dramatic role. Adventure Mad seems to have launched Niels into stardom in Germany, which later that year he released Wrath of the Seas, in which he was top billed. This film concerned the German Navy during World War I. Within a year, Niels had moved from Europe to Hollywood, where he made his American film debut in 1927's Top Sea and Eva, a comedic adaptation of Uncle Tom's Cabin that starred the Duncan sisters, Rosetta and Vivian. Vivian, who would later become Niels' wife in a very interesting marriage. Niels appeared in a supporting role. However, in 1927, Niels played his first leading man role as well in Hollywood. Well, not leading man, but major supporting role. Adult Christopher Sorrell in Sorrell and Son, which starred H.B. Warner, Anna Q. Nilsson, Carmel Myers, Alice Joyce, and Mary Nolan. The story concerned a father determined to raise his son to keep him from his unscrupulous mother, played by Nilsson. While the film got generally good reviews and was a hit, and was also received an Academy Award nomination for Best Director, Niels' work received mixed reviews. Variety said he does not seem to register very strongly. Moving Picture World said that he was miscast. However, a recent commentator on IMDb said that Nil Niels gave one of his best performances of his career. Whatever the critics said, Niels made an impression, as his roles only increased in size after that. First, he co-starred with Leatrice Joy and Joseph Schildkraut in The Blue Danube. Next, he started his first MGM film, the studio at which he would find his greatest fame over the next several years. The film in question was 1927's Laugh Clown Laugh, which starred Lon Chaney and Loretta Young. The film is pretty icky when seen in 2023, as it involves a man falling in love with his adopted teenage daughter. So I won't talk about it very much here. What I will say is that Niels had his largest American role to date as Count Luigi, the villain-type role, but it still got him mixed reviews and a negative one from the New York Times. Niels next starred with Jack Gilbert and Renee Adore in the 1928 smash hit The Cossacks, which I discussed in my Jack Gilbert episode. Please see that if you haven't already. In this film, he played Prince Olenen, a, ra a rather lecherous royal and again kind of a villain. Check out this clip, for example, as he refuses to leave Renee's character, Mariana, alone until he can conclude his re romantic flirtation with her. What strikes me here is that it's the first time, at least from my viewing of Niels' filmography, to notice what has struck me most about his acting, the sheer power and intensity of his eyes, which I briefly mentioned earlier in this episode. It's almost as if the prince is trying to paralyze Mariana with his gaze, and it works. She lets her guard down and yields to his flirtation, I'm by no means approving of his character's actions, but it exhibits a new niche for Niels, the lecherous yet suave and irresistible villain. While it can easily be seen as being a successor to the chic type character that Valentino played, Niels had even more of a sense of danger to him that is even more polished, more sophisticated, more gentlemanly, if you will. Niels next was loaned out to Paramount to be the leading man in the Pola Negri vehicle loves of an actress. While Pola got good reviews from the New York Times, Niels again was heavily critiqued by them. Niels next starred in his first American comedy, the 1928 Marion Davies vehicle, The Cardboard Lover, which, if you recall, I mentioned that I saw earlier at the UCLA Film Archive, and now I'm fortunate to own a copy. The hilarious film follows Marion as Sally, who talks celebrity Andre, played by Niels, and having her pretend to be his lover to make his girlfriend, played by Jetta Goodall, jealous and come back to him. Comedic situations ensue. The film was a solid hit at the box office, and Niels got his first positive notice in the New York Times, who said he does fairly well. Check out this clip, which I think proves Niels was perfectly adept at comedy. Marion Sally is trying to rally Andre out of the bed, and coarse comedy ensues. It's silly, but Niels' facial expressions and reactions prove there was more to him than just his gorgeous, dramatic face. Niels followed this film up with another commercial smash, Our Dancing Daughters, which I will talk about in the next episode. I'm sorry, the next part of this episode. Please stay tuned for Niels Astor, part two.